Hello Chemistry Stud Muffins. Today we're going to work on some formula writing and naming of ionic compounds. We're going to specifically work on transition metals and polyatomic ions. By now your teacher should have shown you a way to figure out the charge that an atom will take on when it bonds. For instance, all of the elements in the alkaline metal family, the first column, since they all have one valence electron, when they bond, they'll lose that valence electron and all become a positive one charge. We've learned trends like this to help us understand what the charges on ions are. So whether you're using an ion chart to help you figure out charges, or you're using your brain because you know what charge some atoms take on when they bond, let's figure out how to put these ions together and make a neutral compound. We're going to start off really simply today. Let's say we have a compound and its name is called sodium chloride. And we need to figure out what's the formula for sodium chloride. Well, sodium has a positive one charge. Let's see if we can visualize this on our board. There's our sodium. Notice it's got a positive one charge, which means this atom lost an electron during bonding. If we're going to pair this up with chloride, a chlorine atom gains an electron during bonding and becomes a negative one charge. When we do formulas for ionic compounds, we know that we have to have a neutral compound. The positive charges and the negative charges have to cancel each other out. And so, if we have a positive one and a negative one, they easily cancel each other out and we would write the formula as NaCl. So what if we tried to make it a little bit more fancy? This time, let's do something with a bigger charge. How about calcium? Calcium's got a positive two charge. What if we wanted to write the formula for calcium chloride? We know that we've got calcium with a positive two. This time, when I try to pair it up with chloride, which has a negative one, you'll notice that the charges do not cancel out. Well, you have to make them cancel out, so what are you going to do? Well, I like to think of it like this. If this is a positive two charge, we need to cancel that out with a negative two charge. But we've only got a negative one. What if we were to get another negative one? This time, we use two chloride ions. Positive two on the calcium, negative one, another negative one. Well, that adds up to a negative two. Positive two, negative two, neutral. The charges have canceled out. How do we write a formula for that? This time, we're going to need a subscript. We need one calcium ion to every two chloride ions. This time let's try to do aluminum chloride. Now aluminum's got a positive three charge. If we wanted to do aluminum chloride, when we put one chloride ion with aluminum, you can easily see that doesn't add up to zero. Hmm, what if we went with positive three needs a negative three to cancel it out? How would we do that with the chloride ion? There's a negative one. Let's put another negative one. And even another negative one. If we use three chloride ions, negative one, negative one, negative one, that adds up to negative three. That cancels out with a positive three. Now our compound is neutral. We would write the formula ALCL3. I had mentioned that this lesson was going to focus on transition metals. We know where the transition metals are located, right in the middle of the periodic table. Now transition metals are interesting because some of them can create multiple charges. In other words, when we compare them to some elements like the alkali metals, which always have a positive one charge, or the alkali earth metals, which always have a positive two charge. Some of the transition metals aren't always that consistent. Sometimes they could do a positive two, but sometimes they could do a positive four. 
Or maybe they're a positive 3, but once in a while a positive 1. So how do we know what charge they're going to do? Well, when you look at the name, there's something called a Roman numeral that's going to indicate the charge to you. For instance, when I look at the name iron 2 chloride, the Roman numeral is the charge. This is iron with a positive 2 charge. So let's see if we can find that and put it on the board for you. Iron's got a positive 2. If I'm going to pair that up with chloride, we know that one chloride ion is not going to work. Positive 2, negative 1, that's not going to give us a neutral compound. So let's try another one. If we put a second chloride ion on there, notice what happens. The positive 2 charge that was on the iron cancels out with a total of negative 2 on the chloride. What's our formula for iron 2 chloride? One iron is paired up with two chloride ions, FeCl2. So what's important here? We have to realize that transition metals are often followed by a Roman numeral. The Roman numeral is simply the charge on the ion. Let's look at the next example. It looks really similar to the last one, doesn't it? Before, we had iron 2 chloride. Now we've got iron with a Roman numeral 3. Iron 3 chloride. You remember, the Roman numeral is the charge. So we could do iron with a positive 3. And let's pair this up with a chloride ion. Now to make this neutral, this time with a positive 3, we've got to cancel it out with a negative 3. Since each chloride ion is a negative 1, we need three of them to come up with a negative 3 charge. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 adds up to a negative 3. That cancels out with our positive 3. So what's the overall formula? FeCl3. I'd like you to try a couple more with me just to make sure you feel really comfortable with this. Now we've got tin 2 chloride. The Roman numeral 2 is the charge. Let's grab the ion that's tin with a positive 2. Now if we try to pair chloride up with it, To make this neutral overall, the positive 2 has to cancel out with a negative 2. That means you need two chloride ions to go along with the tin positive 2. Our formula would be SnCl2. Let's change the formula just a little bit. This time let's do tin 4 chloride. Tin 4, that means tin with a positive 4 charge. Wow, that's a big ion. We've got to cancel out a positive 4 charge. How do we do that with chlorides? We need 1, 2, 3, 4. Notice the easy math here. 4 negative charges, that adds up to a negative 4. The tin had a positive 4. Positive 4, negative 4, cancel out. We have a neutral compound. That means the formula is SnCl4. Okay, now we're going to work backwards. This time I give you the formula, you figure out the name. We've got a formula, PBO. Well, the hard thing about working with lead is lead is one of those transition metals that can do more than one possible charge. You've got to figure out what the Roman numeral is. And again, the Roman numeral is the charge on the lead ion. We're going to use the formula to help us figure this out. You'll notice that lead is paired up with oxide. Oxide's charge never changes. Oxide is always a negative 2. If we pair up one oxide with one lead, I want you to try to figure out what is the charge on the lead have to be. 
Let me show you something. If lead had a positive 4, does that look right? No, you can tell that if the lead had a positive 4 and the oxygen had a negative 2, it's not going to cancel out and be neutral. It's your job to figure out what is the charge on the lead in order to make it cancel out and have no charge overall. Well, using your common sense, you can figure out this is not a lead 4. This is lead. with a positive 2. If the lead has a positive 2, then we can write the formula as lead, Roman numeral 2, the 2 indicates the charge on the lead, positive 2, and the negative ion is oxide. Our name, lead to oxide. What happens when I change the formula to PbO2? This time, there are two oxides in the formula. So, we have O with a negative 2, another O with a negative 2, because there's two of them. And notice in the formula, there's only one lead to absorb that entire charge. Oh, well, let's do some simple math again. Negative 2, negative 2 adds up to a negative 4. You've got one lead to take on that entire charge to make it neutral. What does the charge have to be? If we want this entire charge of negative 4 to cancel out and go away, you would need lead with a positive 4 charge. So when we go to write the name of this compound, we would write lead for oxide. You're getting a little bit more comfortable now. Let's practice transition metals a little bit more. I give you the formula CuCl. Copper is one of those transition metals that can do more than one charge. You've got to figure out what the charge is and indicate that charge with a Roman numeral. So if I give you CuCl, the idea is use the negative ion in the formula to figure out the charge on the positive ion. The formula shows one copper, one chloride. If I've got one chloride and it's a negative one, what is the charge on the copper if it has to cancel out that charge? You got it. The charge on the copper has to be a positive 1. So we would write the name of this compound as copper 1 chloride. What if I gave you SnCl2? Tin is a metal that can do more than one possible charge. Let's use the formula to help us figure out the charge on SN. The formula shows two chloride ions. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Cl with a minus 1, Cl with a minus 1. If we do some quick math, we notice that that adds up to a negative 2. If we're going to figure out the charge on the tin, look at the formula. There's only one tin ion, and it's got to absorb that negative 2. So what is the charge on the tin? That's right. The tin has to be a positive 2. If the tin is a positive 2, it will cancel out the negative 2, and that means the name of our compound is tin 2 chloride. Now we're getting good. 